right, we're in. Up there. Sheep. And we're out. Got a wee party of cows following me this morning. Morning, Holly. What a beast. Big breakdown. It's a drill working there. This is what we're dealing with now. This is the frost it's been in. Frost is it's been in anyway. Roads look fairly lethal. Just be taking my time on to yard number two. Main roads obviously had some salt on it at least. What's the chances we're gonna have sheep in the right place after yesterday's box job? Take your guesses now, will the sheep be on the wheat or will we be on the grass? I hope, I hope they're on the, on the grass. He's waiting patiently for me. Oh, great. Sheep. Who's Kev? Okay. Flashing lights. He's just brought a trailer back here. Before he heads to yard one at home. There's a reason this dog's not getting let off. I imagine she will chase the sheep. Don't want her to get into that habit. Hopefully the ground's frozen enough that I'm gonna get out of here. And I'm just following the sheep here to see where they're getting through. But it looks like they're heading to the exact same place as before. They have done, but they've stopped because they can't get through. So I don't know where they came through again. Came through back the way. There's a gate down there, I need to go and check it. Right, they're not going back through here. Where did they escape? Oh, sheep. Does this make me a shepherd? Gates open in that corner. There they go. Right, we're just moving bits in here because this chiller's getting moved, hopefully. Right, we've just started trying to move this old chill and it's, it's going okay so far. We've propped up a wee bit and then we'll get a strap underneath it to sling it up further and then we're gonna get a pallet underneath it. We'll get the pallet forks underneath one side, the forklift underneath the other and see what happens. We've cleared somewhat of a space. You can see it's lopsided because we've got the one side propped up a wee bit down there. And we'll get a strap slung around there. Okay, we'll get up with the forks and then we'll lift it up. We've abandoned the pallet approach because we realised we already had two slings on it as well. We may as well try it, slinging it like that. Kev's just going to crab steer it away from the wall a wee bit. Just because it's trying to brush against the wall. Just keep it going that way. Alright. And we're out. Easy peasy. A wee bit tight up there, but... So that's the tallest bit. I told you about that knuckle, it's awkward. It's pretty old and tired and it's not really been used all that much recently. So get a power washer out and we'll just give it a bit, a quick blast. Right, just giving it a power wash so it's a lot better looking than it was. It kind of sat in the back there and got quite dusty and sturdy. So good clean down, looking a lot better. We'll get it shifted, it's going right just beyond that yellow lid. And we're in. Just gonna get a full kind of proper wash down by the guys in the shop and then it's going to get converted to a freezer for six months and then it's getting scrapped we're just putting all the bits and bobs back that were sitting here that we need to get shifted to get in these are all the crates that veg come in so we use these for kindling we've got a wood burning stove in the kitchen eh, we've got a wood burning stove in the shop so use that to start them and then there's some old fence posts that we pulled out not that long ago they got chopped up logs Right, I've got a question. Put your comments down below if you've got experience. So, power-wise, New Holland T7210 versus John Deere 6155R versus Fent 718 uh, and also Claz Arian 650. So, if you've got any information or you've used 
two of those tractors and you can compare um, then put it down below and tell me how you got on power wise um, when the PTO is running they all ploughed fine on the five for a Anyway, we're back in here, back in the workshop. A wee bit of time in the workshop because we've got these to chop up. So we need to make these look like that. Because, uh, so these are for the racking uh, and the bars that they span are wider than that gap there. So if we chop that bit off, they'll do the job. I'm just heading along the road again. See those sheep. Either catch them in the act of sneaking out and I can see where they're coming from or hopefully they won't be out, ideally. Sellers are just out there at the combine. A couple of bits to do there. Um, to do insurance with a data tag and stuff like that. Smashing, so far so good. Zero sheep where they're not meant to be, i.e. on the wheat, chewing that away. Staying on the grass. Tree still in the middle of the road. Right, I've got these to plasma cut. Kev's just prepping them, grinding a wee bit where I need to chop, and then also a bit there so I can ground it to the table. We're getting there, they're all done. These to do and these to do, but just changing the consuming bowls on here because of goose. So now these are cut. You'll see why we had to do what we did. So they sit in there. And as you can see, the old lips, they weren't wide enough, the gap to sit in there. So put that there and then boards go on top. It just means if a board gets nudged, it can't fall down the gap. These will stop it. Oops. Fancy these crisps on your on your Christmas Day Boxing Day curry? Who's having a curry for Christmas? Right, I've just been up into the this part of the ceiling, check for leaks and whatnot, and we're pretty much fine there. There's one wee bit, one wee drip, which is actually to do with this main bit. Otherwise, we're good up there. And then I'm just about to go up through that hatch. Kev's just getting the cage. I'll get up, have a scout about in there. But also, we're needing to do to these beams what we did to that beam. So if you see right on the end of my finger there. We put a threaded rod, attaches it to an I beam along the centre column just to keep that Kerto beam bang straight because over time they do start to sag a wee bit. So we tied it right to that level and then over time it won't sag. And then we're going to do the same to these three beams as well. And then Kev's just put all of these cross beams in all the way along and all the way along there. We're three short for this section and we'll get a few more cut. Right, we're in up there. Been up into the ceiling and sorted out what I need to sort out. Got some measurements, um, just getting let down just now. It's quite handy that we can still get that forklift in here for kind of bigger operations, heavier things. Got a guy out this morning to talk about uh, an electric wee industrial forklift in here, um, so he's going to get a few together, just second hand ones, get some quotes together, and maybe get us a demo out as well. More demos. Just taking a bit of rebar. Uh, and we'll put a threaded rod on either end of it or just a bolt and then that'll give us a bit on the top and the bottom to thread off of. It's basically just a bar that's going to hang from the kind of truss that spans the arch roof down to the Kerto beam to tie that into place to just not let it sag over, over the years. That's the threaded bit. Change of plan, we're just going to have a thread on one end. So this will have a flat plate on it. We'll push that up through the hole and then we'll put a thread on this end. This is just a guide to keep everything straight and parallel. So welded a bit of threaded rod on the end there. Kev's just getting a plate cut there for the end of here. And then we'll 
poke out through a hole, which you still need to drill. I've got an auger drill bit for that. There we go. Right, finished off in the workshop there. Bins have just been in there, the recycling guys to pick up and empty some bins. I'm just gonna go and check the sheep again. Hopefully they're not out. You can't really see in the light, but there is no sheep on the wheat. Progress. That's cool. Tomorrow morning I'll be the kind of telltale if they're out again, because they seem to be out through the night and by the time the morning comes round, they're scattered all over the place. So pray for the morning. Thanks very much for watching. Ooh, a bit windy outside. And um, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and see you tomorrow or whenever the next one.